today we're going to be talking kit. I want to go over my chest rig setup for 2024. I want to talk about the items that I'm running and the reasons why I'm running them. I also want to go over some changes that I made to this chest rig over the last year and a half or so, as well as how it's been holding up. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, guys, so first we're going to get into what kind of chest rig this is. This is going to be a Huenco chest rig, H-U-E-N-C-O. I know it's an airsoft chest rig, but it's pretty much a Haley strategic knockoff. I've had it for over a year and a half now, and it's been holding up quite well. If you haven't seen my previous chest rig video, the reason I got this in the first place, I wasn't aware of having a chest rig if I was going to like it or what kind of chest rig I should get, as it was my first chest rig. So I went ahead and got this one because I saw good reviews on the Haley strategic micro rig. This doesn't come with it. We'll get into that in a bit. As you can see here, I went with the multi-cam option living in the Southern California area. I am in the desert most often when I am shooting. So I feel like that kind of matches my environment the best. And we'll go ahead and start up top and then we'll work our way down to the bottom. I'm actually gonna go ahead and take everything out and talk about each item here. If you see here, this is gonna be my B-Tech push to talk. The reason I have this up here is so obviously I can go hands-free with my radio. When I am doing group training, when I'm doing teamwork, stuff like that, we are all on comms usually for the most part. Not necessarily that we're all talking, but we all do have comms so we can obviously all be on the same page. Obviously they have smaller ones from like Disco 32, stuff like that. This is gonna be a B-Tech though. I like this one a lot because as you can see here, there's a little port where you can open that up plug your auxiliary cord and then you're going to plug your auxiliary cord from there into your actual ear pro so after that right below that this is going to be a headlamp I have it just kind of tied in through the molly as you can see here that way if i ever have to use it it's obviously right here good to go but yeah i'm just going to tie that through the strap here as you can see and then after that i have access to it so just kind of want to show you guys what I mean, I like this one a lot. This is gonna be a Herstellar headlamp, H-E-R-S-T-E-L-L-A-R. The reason I like this headlamp is, as you can see here, it's gonna have two buttons. I know right away, so I don't have an accidental ND with white light. If I press the left one, it's gonna be a red light. So I'm still gonna keep my natural night vision. And obviously I'm not gonna give away my location if that's needed. You don't wanna be putting out a bright white light if you're trying to be a little discreet out there if you're training, stuff like that. As you saw there, after the red light, there is going to be a strobe, red and green. And then obviously you're also going to have your white light, which has a few different options, a little bit brighter, a little bit dimmer options. But again, the main reason I like this, because I know if I feel up top, I know if I press the left once, it's just going to be a red light. Go ahead and put that over here on the side. This is going to be an X harness. I do like the H harnesses better, but this is what came with it. So I haven't updated it yet. As far as the actual magazines that I'm running, these are gonna be hex mags. As you see here, I have them facing to the right. I am a right-handed shooter, so sometimes I see people that are either new shooters and they'll have them facing to the left. You don't wanna do that because if you have them facing to the left, you're gonna to have to flip them again. So again, this is gonna call for less movement if you're a right-handed shooter. That way, when you grab the magazine out, it's already orientated in the right direction, which is gonna be forward, obviously, so again, just a little pro tip there. As far as the actual chest rig itself, they're gonna have Kydex inserts. I like these Kydex inserts because they help a lot with reinserting your magazines. Also, when you're drawing them, it makes it a little bit quicker in my opinion. Nothing comes out. I'm also gonna be running, as you can see here, that's gonna be a little zip tie. It just helps me pull out my paint can opener. So just a little pro tip there, if you do shoot rifle, as you can see that little tooth on the paint can opener, every now and then the brass gets expanded in the chamber. This is gonna help you really quick to be able to get that expanded brass because it's hard to get out even with a knife. So that little tooth on the paint can opener helps. You can use paracord if you wanna have a little bit of paracord, something to tie it to your rig if you like. I just use a little bit of zip tie black so I can see it if I happen to drop it, stuff like that. Also helps me grab it out easier if I need. After that, got my tactical Sharpie. Obviously they always come in handy at the range, marking targets. If you have to mark a tourniquet for tea time, taking notes, anything like that, obviously always wanna have a Sharpie on hand. I'm also gonna be running some medical shears. Just kind of have them sewed in between my front pouch and my magazine holders. They were blue, so I kind of spray painted them a little bit to kind of help with the bright color. Not only for medical reasons, if you have to cut stuff, they always come in handy. But obviously medical reasons, if you got to get rid of clothes, shirts, jackets, pants to get to bleeding, stuff like that. You always want to have those handy. After that, let's go to the other side. I am going to have a knife. I got this from my son. This is going to be a Smith & Wesson knife. It's actually really nice too. The grip on it's really, really nice. I like it a lot. This comes in handy. You always want to have a knife on your rig, not just necessarily for defense, but for cutting stuff, fixing stuff. We got a knife, got my paint can opener, got my medical shears, got my Sharpie. 
so far what we talked about. Also, as you can see here, I kind of just rigged up my comms. As you can tell, I just kind of rigged up my cord here. I have it zip tied just to keep it out of the way, keep it streamlined. I am running it to my radio, which is gonna bring me to this expander wing that did not come with the chest rig. I got this on Amazon as well. It's a radio pouch slash magazine pouch. You can hold it underneath with Velcro because it is gonna be a Velcro expander wing. I like it a lot because it adds capability. Now I can have my radio in a pouch on the side and it just hugs the body really nice. And as you can tell here again, I just Velcro it like there at the hook and loop. And then the back of the chest rig is gonna come with this little panel so you can lock that in there. It's nice, it adds another capability as far as you can use an extra mag, obviously using it for my radio. And again, it hugs the body, which brings it all nice and tucked, which actually makes it more comfortable. And that's gonna be the back of the chest rig, as you can see here. As far as the radio itself, it's gonna be a UV5R. I'm running it with an extended battery. My BTEC push to talk. I'm gonna have a little Nagoya stubby antenna, which is gonna help keep the antenna out of the way also for transmitting. I feel like it keeps it from transmitting too far. I know these are only five watts, so they're not really going too far anyways, but again, for group training, team training, I like to have the stubby antenna. Also, like I said, it keeps the antenna out of the way. So make sure if you do get these UV5Rs though, you don't just like have them and think you're good to go. You gotta actually program them. As you can see here, I have it locked. You hold the pound button, you can unlock it. But again, I'm gonna have certain frequencies programmed for the friends, uh, for the homies when we're training. So my first 25 or so is gonna be FRS channels, but then I'm gonna have some wind channels, stuff like that. You do wanna look up local repeaters in your area and program in here. If you have a computer, you can use the Chirp software, which I highly recommend, it makes programming a lot easier. If you don't have that though, you can do it manually as well. Once you find the frequencies, you can unlock this UV5R, which jailbreaks it, then you can search for more frequencies and then go ahead and manually program those repeaters in, but that's a whole other story. I do have videos in the past. If you're interested, make sure to check them out on my channel. But again, don't think you're good to go just because you have one of these radios, just like your rifle, your firearms, your kit, your medical supplies, all that good stuff. You got to actually train with it to become efficient and actually know how to use it. Don't think you're just good to go because you have it on your kit. Just a little reminder there for you guys. We'll go ahead and get to this next pouch. This is going to be my flashlight. This is going to be a gear light flashlight. I like this flashlight because it's adjustable as far as the throw, as you can tell there. So you can have a wide throw or you can concentrate that throw which makes it reach out a little bit further and make the throw a little bit smaller which is nice different options which is always cool also this is waterproof which is solid made in america so definitely a solid option but after that i'm gonna go ahead and get to my gloves normally i'm running electric tape on this carabiner clip as well unfortunately i kind of ran out recently at the range i would have my gloves here if i need my gloves i can take them off like so I could obviously get to my electrical tape when I have that on there. Having a carabiner clip gives you options to have chem lights, gloves, tape, all that good stuff. They do have locking ones, which I highly recommend instead of these push ones, because every now and then these push ones can get caught, but this has been holding up well for now, so I want to upgrade to a locking one. As far as my actual gloves, I'm going to be running these Magpul gloves. I like these because they have dexterity. You can actually use your cell phone, which is nice. They're not too thick, but they're actually warm as well, and they do provide some protection as far as touching debris, brush, stuff like that. So you have to go hands-on, anything like that. If your firearm's getting hot, it's always nice to have gloves. Our other side pouch over here is going to be a multi-tool. Obviously, a Leatherman's always solid. This is going to be a mossy oak. Just kind of spray painted a little bit because it was a chrome option. But multi-tools, honestly, you're going to use this more than your rifle, more than your firearm. You're going to use this a lot. Whether you're fixing equipment, whether you're tightening targets at the range, whether you got to cut stuff, screw stuff down, anything like that, definitely a solid option. You always want to have a multi-tool on your kit. So we got the headlamp, the multi-tool, the Sharpie, the flashlight, the medical shears, the paint can opener, the knife, the gloves. Let's go ahead and get into the actual pouch itself now. So as far as the actual pouch, the one issue that I have had happen to me so far with this chest rig was one of the strings on the zipper, but the zipper didn't break. It was just the string. So I was able to zip tie one of them, which brings me to these zippers. And another perk of this chest rig is it's going to be double zippers. So if one of your zippers breaks, it's okay because you can still use the other one. If they were to break right here, you could use this to close up to it, or you could obviously vice versa. Still use the chest rig zippers if needed, because again, it's going to be double zippered. It's just another solid perk, in my opinion. Having double zippers on your kit is a must, in my opinion. I'll go ahead and get into this pouch. Up top, I'm going to have a monocular. It's going to be from Vortex. This is going to be their solo option, the 8x25. I've done a video on this in the past. If you're interested, make sure to check it out. Being able to reach out and PID further without having to don your firearm, it's just nice to have an extra capability to reach out further and just gather intel and see what's going on if needed. I'm also gonna have a balaclava. 
Multi perks to the balaclava, obviously. First one's gonna be identity concealment, but also keeping your face warm, or if there's like a sandstorm, if you're training in the desert, which I do, I've had happen in the past, it gets windy out there, this is gonna keep stuff out of your face. So again, multi perks of the balaclava, definitely recommend having one of these items in your kit. Next items, I'm gonna have a couple of chem lights. I like to have these chem lights in my chest rig because if you have them exposed, like these ones where you can tell they're a little bit different colored, these ones haven't been as exposed and they're not as much different colored. These will still work, but I like to have them covered. So if you do have them on the outside, just keep that in mind. They're gonna have a little bit funky color, not work as well as when you have them covered up, just so you know. Chem lights, if you're doing anything at nighttime training. Also, if you have, say, a home defense scenario and something happens in one room, you can throw a chem light out front of that room and let the cops know or let whoever know, hey, there's a yellow chem light or a blue chem light outside the door where the person was or where me and my family are hiding, anything like that. You can use your own imagination, but definitely chem lights are always a go-to. Also for signaling, you can make a buzz saw. That's a whole other topic, but chem lights are definitely a good item to have in your kit. After that, gonna have an extra Sharpie because obviously two is one and one is none. Also gonna have chapstick up here. This comes in handy, obviously, when you're in the desert, it gets windy, like I said, it can get dry out there. So definitely a piece of chapstick always comes in handy. Also for your weapon light, you can kind of put some on the end of there. It'll help it from clouding up a little bit. So I'm gonna have a bag of extra batteries. Gonna have CR123As, double A's, triple A's, CR2032s. I got an extra aux cord for my comms, backup batteries, all that good stuff that you wanna have and just having it in a Ziploc bag to help with the exposure. You wanna have backup batteries all the time. So after that, I'm also gonna have a little compass in here. This is gonna be a Sunto compass. I'm also gonna have a boo-boo kit. I got some antibiotics, band-aids, a little bit of medical gauze, medical tape, stuff like that before I get into my IFAC if not needed. We'll get into the IFAC in a little bit, but again, gonna be in a Ziploc to keep it waterproof. Also gonna have an emergency blanket in case blood loss, whatever, people can go hypothermic. Also, obviously, if it gets cold, it's an emergency use. Probably never gonna have to use it. I hope I don't, but you never know. It's not that big of a storage loss, so having one of those, in my opinion, is pretty handy. And then a backup for my UV5R. Again, having backup batteries, this is gonna be for my comms, this is gonna be for my ear pro, weapon light, optics, stuff like that, and then having a backup battery for my comms. All those are essential items, in my opinion. Another thing I'm going to have in here is bits from my multi-tool. But yeah, so again, with the multi-tool option, you can kind of take one of these bits out. Say I need a flathead. Take one of these bits out right here. And now I have a flathead option. So again, multi-tool, solid item to have in your kit. Mossy Oak, again, is going to come with some extra bits for it, like the Phillips, flathead, Allen wrenches, all that good stuff. And then just a little bit more of some bandages and again, antibiotics, ointments, some more medical supplies. Cause again, this is the type of stuff you're gonna be using a lot more so than magazines or ammo, stuff like that, in my opinion, at least. So again, boo-boo kits, batteries, chem lights, balaclava, monocular, multi-tool, sharpies, flashlight, medical shears, chapstick, paint can opener, compass, a knife and gloves and a headlamp. As you can tell, we can fit a lot of stuff in this chest rig so far, which is really nice. Not to mention three magazines, the comms that we went through already, push to talk. That's pretty much it though, as far as for the pouch. They're gonna have some organizers in there. You can kind of organize your stuff, which is nice. Also gonna have some hook and loops. So you can put some more organizers on there if you'd like. I'm gonna have the US flag on the front. Never been in the military though, never been law enforcement, straight civilian, straight LARPer prepared citizen, whatever you want to call it. Also on the bottom here, as you can tell, it's going to have some drain holes, which is nice if it does ever rain, stuff like that, the water's going to have a way to get through. Or you can also run some cordage through there if you want to tie some extra tourniquets. Which brings me to this extra dangler I got on the bottom, which is going to be a multi-cam dangler as well. I would take this panel back off here, and then the dangler is just in addition, as you can see here. So you just put the Velcro on there with the dangler, back panel from the chest rig, and then again, adds more capability to this chest rig. I got this dangler on Amazon. It's gonna be multi-cam as well. It's gonna have hook and loop on the front so you can put patches if you'd like or organizers from chem lights, stuff like that. And on the bottom of it, it's gonna have a strap for my tourniquet. Gonna have a little Sharpie on there to mark my tea time. I like the tourniquet in the middle option because I can get it with my left or right hand as you can tell here. And it's visible so other people can see it if needed as well. And make sure you don't cheap out on your tourniquets. This is gonna be a cat. Make sure you get something solid out there. Like I said, I got the cheap Amazon chest rig, but you know, spend your money where you need it. This is like a quality tourniquet from North American Rescue. Pretty much, this is like $30 and this chest rig was 50. So just to show you where you wanna spend your money at, in my opinion, at least. Cause again, this is held up well, but you don't wanna get like a cheap tourniquet where the 
windage is gonna break, stuff like that. So anyways, getting into the dangler pouch now here. The whole reason I got this dangler was to have an IFAX so I could fit chest seals, all that good stuff, which we'll get into right now. But two cons about this chest rig I do wanna get into is these straps aren't thick, like some of those nicer ones out there, but it's not a huge issue. It's just nice to have some thicker shoulder pad straps, which is nice. And another con is it's not really too much area to put like a water bottle holder, stuff like that, at least in my opinion. Also only having three mags. You could obviously run extra mags in your dangler, you could obviously get extra wing expanders, but again, having only three mags is the reason I would have a backpack or a battle belt, stuff like that as well with more magazine access. It's just those couple cons that I wanted to go over, but they weren't a deal breaker for me because all the other perks that I'm able to run with having three mags, and again, I would be running this with a pack, which I would have more magazines in there. And obviously if I have my battle belt, I have more mags on there as well too. So just wanna keep that transparency with you guys, but getting into my IFAC, this is gonna be an IFAC, obviously for those of you that don't know, it's an individual first aid kit. Very important stuff in my opinion. Clear your nasal airway. You're gonna have some gloves too, in case you gotta work with blood. Gonna have some more trauma dressing from North American Rescue, some quick clot, some more gauze, cause again, you're gonna be using a lot of gauze if God forbid you ever gotta use your IFAC. I got some chest seals. And again, this is all coming from this dangler pouch, which is nice. One more backup radio battery as well. All that good stuff that you see here inside this chest rig, which in my opinion, quite a big bang in a small package, if you ask me. As far as not having a big load bearing equipment, as far as LBE rigs, recce rigs, which obviously there's definitely a situation for or a time that calls for that. But if you don't have one of those, if you're looking for something in the middle, as far as like in between a micro rig and a recce rig, I feel like this setup with the dangler pouch and the expander wing is kind of like in the middle. And that's why I've been running this over the last year and a half or so, making a couple mods here and there to it, like you can see. but. Other than that, this chest rig is held up well. All this stuff to be able to fit in that chest rig, having quick access to all this, I feel like is necessary. Of course, I would like to have a write in my rain notebook, my maps, a GPS, all that good stuff as well. But sometimes you gotta be able to know what you can put in your backpack and what you can't. It's all part of the learning game. Just kinda wanna give you guys ideas of if you have one of these, why you should wanna get some of this stuff to accommodate this. Again, having all this stuff isn't just to be cool, it's to accommodate the whole prepared citizen mindset, which is what I'm going for and what I feel like the second amendment is for, because I don't feel like it's for hunting, but that's a whole other story. Again, remind you guys that if you have a rifle, all this stuff, in my opinion, is essential or necessary as well to accommodate that rifle. And having a chest rig like this chest rig or other chest rigs to hold all this stuff, again, is just essential in my opinion. So it doesn't have to be this chest rig, it doesn't have to be this stuff. I just wanted to give you guys ideas and give you guys a look at what I'm running and what's working for me. Again, I'm sure in a year from now, I'm gonna kind of switch stuff up, but for now, it's kind of been holding up well and working well for me. So if you guys have any questions or suggestions or comments, maybe on what I should be running or what I should change up, make sure to shoot me a comment down below. I would love to hear it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video today and thank you for watching.